In this video, I'm going to look at the specialist glassware that we use in organic practicals known as quick fit apparatus. So hopefully you can see in the two photos that I've chosen, the quick fit apparatus has the special ground glass joints, which means that when you put two pieces together, you get a very good seal between the two pieces of glassware and it ensures that you don't lose any vapours. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the classic or essential quick fit apparatus. Um, I'm just focusing on the kind of apparatus you would need to use in sort of basic organic procedures and then we'll look at some classic setups and then we'll finish with an exam question. So if we have a look at the essential apparatus now, so all I'm going to do is name these nine pieces of apparatus and just give you a very brief explanation of what they're used for. So number one is a pear-shaped flask and that's used for heating. Number two is a glass stopper. Number three is a round bottom flask that's also used for heating. Number four is what we call a still head. I'll come back to that in a moment. Number five is what we call a Liebig condenser. So imagine you're wanting to attach a Liebig condenser to one of those flasks, pear-shaped flask or round bottom flask, and you want the condenser to be in what we call the distillation position. So essentially what we need to do is attach a condenser here and the flask would be here. So this piece of apparatus here, the still head, would go in either there or there. The condenser, this part of the condenser, would attach here. You could put a stopper in there, you could even put a thermometer in there to seal up the apparatus. So if we move on to six now, that's called a receiver adapter, and that just enables whatever's um, condensers in the condenser, you can collect it in a suitable collection vessel, which we'll come on to in a second. Number seven is a separating funnel. I'll come on to that at the end of the video when we look at the last technique. Number eight is what we call a screw top adapter. So for example, you could put a thermometer into here, and then that would typically go at the top of the still head there, so you could measure the temperature of the vapour inside here. And number nine is a conical flask which you would use to collect substances in. So the receiver adapter would go into there and the um, product could drop into the conical flask. Remember you don't use these for heating. So if we move on to the apparatus and setup for distillation now, and basically I'm just going to talk through this diagram and explain what these key six things are. So first of all we need a source of heat. So I've got this water bath here so we could use something like that or an electric heating mantle. It's not a good idea to use direct heat because organic substances are often flammable. So number one would be a pear-shaped or a round bottom flask. Remember we can't use conical flasks for heating. You'll notice also that I've mentioned there to not forget your anti-bumping granules. So these are little tiny beads of aluminium oxide and they provide a surface on which the bubbles can form quite easily and so you don't get sort of uncontrolled boiling or bumping as it's known as. So number two is the still head which I described a minute ago. Number three is a stopper or a thermometer and it's essential in distillation that you have a closed system otherwise the vapour would just escape straight out of the top there. Number four is a Liebig condenser and you'll see there it says water goes in at the bottom out at the top and that just basically makes sure that the condenser fills with water fully and you get efficient or effective cooling of the vapour inside this inner glass tube here. So a condenser is essentially two glass tubes. You've got this inner glass tube running down the middle 
So as your substance here, as it's heated, it vaporizes and it falls down here. And the outer glass tube has the cold water running through it and that effectively cools the vapor down, condenses it back into a liquid and it runs out here. So five is what we call the receiver adapter. So that's gonna help the, the liquid called the distillate fall into the collection vessel. So number six, your collection vessel could be a test tube or a conical flask. And you'll notice here, I've got this sitting in an ice water mixture. So that just makes sure that the um, volatile substances stay liquid. So if we look at the apparatus and set up for reflux now, it's a lot simpler this one. So that's it. So again, we've got a pear-shaped flask or a round bottom flask, not the conical flask. Heat source as before. Don't forget your anti-bumping granules so you get the smooth boiling. And the condenser is number two. Remember, water goes in at the bottom, out at the top. So the condenser fully fills up with water and you get effective cooling of the vapour. Now you'll notice that there's no stopper in this. So what you don't want is to seal that off. And basically the vapour will condense before it gets to the top and just fall back into the, into the flask there. So the final apparatus and setup we'll look at is for the separation of liquid organic mixtures now typically you would have organic and aqueous liquids together in the mixture. So this is where you would use the separating funnel. If you remember, it's this piece of apparatus here. So what you would do is add the organic product to the separating funnel and then you would add distilled water to that. And what that would do is it would create two distinct layers the organic layer would typically be on top because they are less dense than water. And then once you've got those two layers, you can allow the aqueous layer to run out by just opening this tap at the bottom. That would mean that the organic layer is left on its own, which you could then collect. And typically there would be small traces of water inside that organic layer. So you'd add a small quantity of drying agent to that organic layer. So a couple of examples there you could use anhydrous calcium chloride or anhydrous magnesium sulfate. And the final thing you would do is filter or decant the solid from the organic liquid. So just a quick question now from a past exam paper. So the question was talking about a substance called oil of wintergreen. So you can see it says, after its preparation, oil of wintergreen can be purified by distillation. Draw a label diagram showing how the apparatus is set up for distillation. Two marks up for grabs. So what sort of things was the examiner looking for here? So if you just want to pause the video quickly and have a think, jot some ideas down, maybe have a go at sketching the apparatus from memory, and then I'll show you the mark scheme. Okay, so here's the mark scheme. There were there was a mark going for the diagram. So obviously they're not expecting something as perfect as this, but what they wanted to see was a round bottom or a pear-shaped flask. Notice there it says do not allow conical flask or these other types of vessels as well. The condenser needs to be correctly orientated, so on a diagonal pointing down. We need a stopper or a thermometer here. So it says do not allow diagram mark if the system is not closed. Remember I said before it has to be a closed system otherwise you're going to lose your product and then you've got this delivery tube and suitable collection vessel. So you can see they've used a conical flask there but notice it would allow a boiling tube, a test tube or even a beaker. And the essential labels were the round bottom flask or pear shaped flask, the condenser, and a source of heat.